I ran the Parkinson program in the Fort Myers area for about nine years, and so that's where my background with um, working with people with Parkinson comes from. And uh, I do a lot of training for physical therapists to learn how to help people with Parkinson's. How many of you have mobility problems? Sometimes have trouble getting off the toilet, out of bed, yes. uh, off the uh, out of the car, <laughs> <laughs> off the floor. Mm -hmm. Nobody in here falls, all right? Not, uh, ha have any of you voluntarily gone to the floor and back up on a regular basis? Do you practice that on a... I, I lay on the floor all the time. Wonderful. That's uh, excellent. My wife thinks I'm dead. You know, but I, lay, <laughs> I lay on the floor and watch television. <laughs> uh, I find, you know, that's good. It's a good position. Yes. And uh, do you do any exercises while you're down there, or just eat popcorn and drink beer? <laughs> I can't have a beer. No beer. But that's yes. Could I tell a funny story? Sure. So Alan went to the bathroom, and he, he, he we have his own bathroom, but he used a different bathroom, and he locked the door. And he could not get off the toilet. <laughs> so I took the skeleton, you know, that little skeleton key, and I tried, and I had my trainer over, she tried, and we couldn't do it. I had to call a locksmith, so I had to, for $60, I had to spring him. <laughs> <laughs> it took 60 bucks to get you out of the bathroom? Get him out of the toilet, it cost $60. <laughs> we had an incident similar to that on the, um, the last the cruise that our group from Fort Myers went on in January, is we went on a train ride, and um, there was just this little tiny bathroom on the train. Well. One of the gentlemen got up from the toilet, but he stepped on his pants leg with his other with foot, and so he couldn't move. So being all good friends, one of the other, not his own care partner, but another one was going by the door, and he opens it up and says, I can't get out of here. I'm standing on my clothes. And, and so she went in and helped him. <laughs> Because well, big they're friends. <laughs> That's right. She's used to doing that all the time. It used to be the Partridge family, now it's the Parkinson's Yes, it's the Parkinson's family. <laughs> so mobility is all of these things. These things that we do every single day that makes our life um, worth living, right? Those things that we didn't have to think about before. Remember that story about the, um, those pilots that overflew Minneapolis last summer? They could do that because they had an automatic pilot, right? Well, when you got Parkinson's, your automatic pilot is out to lunch, so don't call him. He's not coming. You have to learn to do things on your own. These are some of the things that are difficult because you've lost that dopamine. Doing two things at once. And sometimes that might mean when you're out trying to take a walk and you've got a care partner that's um, chatting a lot <laughs> while you're walking, that might make it more difficult. Maintaining your upright posture. How many of you feel that? That sometimes you just, you can't tell that you're slumped over and your care partner says, well, will you sit up straight or you're leaning to the side or whatever? Mm -hmm. That's because of the loss of dopamine. It's not something that where you're just lazy mm -hmm. or you um, don't want to keep your dignity and keep yourself up straight. Performing automatic movements like Rolling over in bed, moving sit to stand, getting on and off of the toilet, um, getting up from the floor, all of those things, even walking, the most natural thing for us to do, come, it becomes difficult sometimes. Starting and stopping a movement. How many of you have found that? That you might have trouble getting out of a chair. Right? You struggle and you struggle. And, and when you finally get up, and then you have trouble making that first step. And you get stepping and then you start running almost on your toes. That's part of that loss of dopamine. That's what that happens from. is because that's the modulator in our body. And then adjusting to changing this in environment. So when you're stepping off a carpet onto tile, or you're walking um, off the sidewalk onto the grass, feel really unsteady. Those kind of things happen because of the loss of dopamine, okay? 
How many of you have freezing incidents? Where, and I don't mean cold from being in Wisconsin. You get both ways. <laughs> that freezing where all of a sudden you can't move. That's a part of Parkinson's also. We're going to talk a little bit about what you can do with that, okay? And then falls. Some people fall frequently with Parkinson's as the disease advances. These are the um, normal motor symptoms that we associate with Parkinson's disease. And tremor, it's just there. It doesn't really affect your ability to perform your ADLs. Socially, you don't like it, but it really doesn't interfere with your activities of daily living. But rigidity and stiffness. We were meant to climb trees. So we have bigger muscles in the front than we do in the back. And as these muscles keep contracting, they kind of pull us into this posture. And so when I come forward like that, what happens here? I lose my lumbar curve, and so now I, my weight is mostly on my toes, so my whole postural alignment is affected by that. But it also affects function, your ability to do things. Bradykinesia and hypokinesia, that slowness of movement, you're not able to take as long a step as you used to, you're not able to pick the foot up as high as you used to, you're not able to go at the pace that you used to. That's all part of bradykinesia and it, that is very devastating for ADLs because it used to take you what, 10 minutes to shower and dress? Now it might take an hour, a half hour, whatever, right? It takes a lot longer to complete the tasks, right? And then postural instability, if you have idiopathic Parkinson's disease, that comes later in the disease process. But if you have um, one of the Parkinsonisms, you might have falls early in the disease process. So if you're having falls early in the disease process, then talk to your doctor because you don't have idiopathic Parkinson's disease. You have a Parkinsonism. Okay, what happens when you have rigidity? Well, we already talked about how it changes your posture. You get muscle contractions, you're going to get pain because now you can't move as freely. Your body is made to move. That's why we have all these joints and muscles and everything is so that we can move freely and do what we'd like to do. Think about if my body is like this, how well am I going to uh, be able to breathe and how much breath support am I going to have for speaking? Not a lot, right? Because now it's all tightened down. Do that to yourself. Actually, bend down on your, in your chair is like this. And now blow all the air out and say, I'm very glad to be here today. Now sit up nice and straight and tall. Take a nice deep breath in and say, I'm very glad to be here today. I'm very glad to be here today. You notice the difference, right? I mean, it's something as simple as that, that being able to be posturally aligned is going to make a big difference. Another thing is range of motion. So sitting how you're all sitting right now, bring your right arm up and pay attention to where it is, okay? And now bring your arm down and now I want you to lean forward in your chair and wiggle your bottom all the way back into the chair as far as you can and now sit up straight. And now bring your arm up. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? So, it does affect range. You want to be able to have full range of motion. So that's a big thing. One of the things that we lose early on in the disease process is that loss of um, axial rotation. How many of you had uh, loss of arm swing as a problem early in the disease. Part of that is because when we walk, this is actually rotation of the upper body on the lower body. And if you lose that, then you start walking like this, right? And so that's affecting the function of your walk because we need that rotation in order to take those longer steps. And that we just did. There's some muscle tightness that's pretty common in this area. Any of you feel that on yourselves? That you feel that that upper body, that chest area is tight, or here in the hips, behind the knees, or at the ankles? 
Those are all the flexor muscles. So if you're doing workouts and all of that, don't be concentrating on the biceps and the hamstrings, the bending muscles. Work on the straightening muscles, so the extensor muscles. You want to concentrate on the triceps, for example. So you want to be lifting your weight up this way or taking it back this way straight so that you're strengthening those extensor muscles. You want to hip, your hips, you need to work on a lot because you need those glutes to be good and strong. So you want to push back with them or practice going to stand because that uses the quads and the um, glutes at the same time and straightening those knees. If you watch people sometimes that have had Parkinson's for a long time, you see that they're fixed into that flexion at the knee, so now they can't get themselves up straight, and that's going to cause balance problems. So if you can keep yourself flexible for a long period of time, you're going to keep those balance problems at bay. This just shows you what happens with your postural alignment, and postural alignment is affected by that loss of dopamine. It's not that you're lazy or anything, it's that you don't know, you've lost those sensors in your body that tell you where straight is. But look at how this man is, to be posturally aligned, the ear should be over the shoulder and over the hip. There's like four inches there, isn't there? Mm -hmm. And standing, the other thing is, is it affects your visual field. If you're standing like this, all you see is this space on the floor. You want to be able to see far out so you can anticipate any danger if you have to go around a table, a chair, an obstacle in your way. So you want to be up as far as possible in straight alignment. Okay, we talked about the bradyphonesia being um, the biggest problem, but you can learn strategies to move. Your automatic pilot might be out to lunch, but you don't care because if you think of everything that you want to do before you do it, and sometimes it even works if you visualize what you're doing. Remember how you used to do something. How did you look when you got up in front of a group before? How many of you were public speakers or had uh, jobs where you had to get up in front of a group or anything? Okay, think of how you looked when you got up there. Try to assume that same kind of a posture. Be mindful of what you look like. Think it through. Avoid distractions. That means don't try to have the TV running and a group of people talking and you're trying to stand up from a chair. 